Hello and welcome to my video on cyanotype duotone. So I've recently been working on a project that's called In Praise of Raw Data, where I'm collaborating with Dr. Claudia Mignone at the Institute of Astrophysics in Rome. So in this video today, I'm just going to show you a little bit of what I've been doing with the cyanotype duotone process. Um, I'm going to show you the process that I've been using, but um, as you'll see in the video, things went slightly wrong. Um, so I'm just going to show you my process and hopefully you enjoy it. Um, it's kind of designed in a kind of tutorial way. So if you're interested in doing cyanotype duotone, um, I think there's enough information in this video for you to go ahead and try it yourself. Um, it's actually quite a um, simple process uh, when you do it right. So um, I think it'll enable quite a lot of people just to get into the process and just really enjoy it. Um, I haven't really talked about the purpose of my YouTube videos before, but I've been doing them for about five years now, now we're in 2025, um, and people have found them really useful just as a kind of quick go-to and kind of teach themselves different uh, techniques. Um, and I find it really useful just to kind of share what I've been working on and then actually when I share these processes people kind of build on them and really just kind of make the processes their own whether that's using a different material or anything like that. Um, so I'm really just doing these videos just to help people to just experiment and try out ideas. So with that in mind I hope you enjoy the video. So here are the objects that you need, the potassium ferricyanide, the ammonium ferric citrate. So I'm measuring out 10 grams of potassium ferricyanide. I'm now measuring out 25 grams of ammonium ferric citrate. So as individual components, these chemicals are not sensitive to UV light. So I'm now mixing the potassium ferricyanide with 100 ml of water and I primarily use tap water but you can use distilled water. I'm then mixing the ammonium ferric citrate with 100 ml of water. So this is quite an easy recipe to remember and in fact I've memorised it off by heart. It's super important to ensure that you dissolve your chemicals in the water really well before moving on to the next step. So you can see here, I'm just double checking that it's all really well dissolved. Now I'm mixing the chemicals together. Um, and once these are mixed together, they're going to be sensitive to ultraviolet or UV light from the sun. I'm now coating the paper and I'm doing one vertical stroke followed by one horizontal stroke. You can then store the chemicals as you're going to need them later. I'll be putting my cyanotype somewhere dark to dry. So my negatives have been separated into orange, blue and red. I'm going to use the orange for my yellow layer and the blue for my blue layer. You can see this is also where I messed up because my images are opposite to each other. The images are facing in opposite directions. You can do the colour separations easily in Photoshop um, and this enables different colours to come through from the negative, uh, which means you get blue and yellow tones in your cyanotype image. This was actually quite a tricky image to use because there's so much going on. Something with a lot of contrasting colours would work really well. 
I'm now laying the first negative on um, and I'm just marking out where the negative goes which means it'll be easier when I come to put the second negative on. So I'm just trying to mark the sides of the image at the top and at the bottom. And then I'm going to put a piece of Perspex on top and clip it securely at the edges which will stop light from going underneath the negative and will result in a softer print. I'm now going to expose the cyanotype to UV light for 10 minutes and I'm going to use my cyanotype.co.uk lights which are really effective. Um, and I've also had these little wooden feet made for them, which means it's easier to place them. So this is the image having been exposed for 10 minutes. You can see it's a kind of rusty brown colour. Um, and you can see this is the result from the exposure. And I'm now going to wash this linotype, which will essentially develop it. So this is our first layer which we're then going to bleach and tone. So this is the first layer, which I'm going to leave to dry. And while I'm doing that, I'm mixing up 15 grams of soda crystals, which will form my bleach, and 15 grams of dandelion leaf tea, which will make my yellow toner. And then I'm pouring hot water on it so that it dissolves the soda crystals and it also um, releases the tannins from the leaves of the dandelion tea, which is what will bind with the iron in the cyanotype to make the yellow tone. I'll link my cyanotype toning video below. I'm now going to pour the soda crystals into my trays. So this is 15 grams of soda crystals mixed with a litre of warm water. I'm then straining my dandelion leaves so I don't have too many bits in my mixture and this was 15 grams of dandelion tea to a litre of water. So this is the print being bleached and you can see that it's fading quite fast. Um, that's it after about two minutes and you can see it's quite bleached and quite yellow and then I'm washing that soda crystal mixture off before toning it in the dandelion tea and it should go a kind of yellow and light brownish colour. Um, so this forms essentially my yellow layer. You can see it's quite faded but that's okay for what we want to do next. Um, so what I did was I left this to dry overnight um, which meant that it could dry out properly before putting it on my next layer. So that you can see it's quite a goldish tone and then I'm just covering up my soda crystals and dandelion tea um, so that it doesn't get too much air overnight. Um, and now I am putting on the cyanotype mixture that I mixed up yesterday and doing my second layer which will form my blue layer. So I'm just going to use the same coating technique so one vertical stroke and then one horizontal stroke. Um, ideally, you want quite a smooth layer so the details can be clearly seen. So I'm going to coat this and then I'm going to leave it to dry again before I expose it to UV light. I'm now putting my negative on for the blue layer and I'm very carefully putting down the edges so that I get the registration correct, even though it's the wrong way round. So don't do this, this was a very bad idea. However, as I said at the end, luckily I did film the process the last time I did it with my iPhone, so I can show you an actual result that went well. Sorry about that, but um, you can see the process, you can see the kind of uh, technique that you would use if you didn't put the negative the wrong way around. Whoopsie! I'm now going to expose the print to UV light, this time for 15 minutes. 
um, and this is because the UV light needs to penetrate through the layer again and um, so you want to make sure that it's quite uh, well done and it's not underexposed and um, I'm just putting the clips on again just to make sure no light gets underneath the negative so you can see that happening here it's also important to say that I got this idea from Annette Golas's uh, Cyanotype Toning book. Uh, she goes into a lot of detail, so I highly recommend reading that if you really want to master this process. This is me kind of riffing on some of the recipes that she uses um, and trying out my own toner. Again, you can see that the Cyanotype is a nice golden brown colour, so it's ready to be washed. Um, this is me taking off the negative for the second time, uh, the negative which is the wrong way around. I'm now washing the print and then I'm also going to hang the print up to dry. Um, you can see the yellow tones are coming through even though the negative was the wrong way around. So you're still getting that dimensionality that I was talking about before. I'm now going to show you some clips from my iPhone from when I did the process the first time. So this is me bleaching the first ever Cyanotype Duotone print that I did, the one with the negative the right way around. I'm also going to tone this Cyanotype, so you can see me doing that here. Um, you can see that it's going the yellow colour and then this is the final print and you can see that it has a dimensionality or a dimensional level that a normal cyanotype doesn't have. So I've been really interested in sustainable photographic processes but as part of this project I wanted to learn more about printing. So as part of this project I've worked with Park Press uh, who are based in Margate and use some of the images to produce risograph prints. I've also worked in collaboration with Claire Hewitt, who's based in Birmingham, um, and I went to Birmingham to learn about how to make sustainable screen prints. So we used um, an ink that was made with oak gall and cotton papers and recycled papers. So next week, I'm also going to work with Vanessa Short, who specialises in intaglio photo reveal type printing, and we're going to be using Acura inks, I think that's how you say it, and we're going to try and make as sustainable a etching as possible. And then in February, I'm going to have a show for In Praise of Raw Data, which will be at Salon in Margate, so it's right at the end of February going into March. Um, where I'll be showing the results of the artworks for the first time. So overall, this has been a really interesting opportunity to kind of do some research after my PhD. As I mentioned before, it was all about astronomical imaging. So it's enabled me to take kind of different strands from my research um, and take them a little bit further. And if you didn't know before, I have a Patreon page. Um, so if you're interested in joining my Patreon, I do regular postcards, so I do a monthly postcard of my artwork, um, but I also give things like recipes and tutorials, and the idea behind it is that you're able to use my Patreon as a kind of archive, so if you're interested in Seaweed Developer, you can just see it, search Seaweed Developer on there. Um, if you're interested in Cyanotype Toning, I have a whole video on that, and, um, and just really kind of put work in progress on there. Um, as you know from this video, um, not all of my results come out perfect first time, but I like to kind of share the work in progress. So if you're interested in joining my Patreon, um, it really helps to kind of support my practice. It supports projects like this, exhibitions, residencies, etc. Uh, that I wouldn't be able to have otherwise. So yeah, thanks very much for watching.